What is going on guys? In today's video we are going to be creating this Tesla website using Figma and Midjourney. Using the same method you can make things like this, this and this. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, head over to Midjourney. Now you will need a paid subscription for this, but I think it's about $10 a month or so. That's the one that I have. Now I've already gone through the process of making this website, so I'm kind of going back on my steps to show you guys how I did it. When I was in Midjourney, I gave it the prompt of this. Now this is something like, perfect side profile of a futuristic looking adventure mobile type SUV. Now I didn't specifically say Cybertruck, but one of the results it gave me was pretty much a Cybertruck. So these four images are what we got here. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, that's a Cybertruck, more or less. Maybe it's missing a door handle or something, but that looks very Cybertruck to me. And it was when that came up, I thought, why not just redesign the Tesla website? Let's go. We're gonna go down here to upscale and we're gonna press subtle. Look at that crispy as all hell. Let's copy that image and we'll go over to Figma. We'll create a frame and we're gonna choose MacBook Pro 14 and let's just call this Tesla. Let's paste in that image with control V and let's resize it a little bit. Our image is actually cut off at the bottom here but that's not important. We'll just kinda of cover that up and we're done. Just kidding. First up, let's create our navigation. Now we're gonna just keep this the same as the test website because you you wanna know why? It works. So let's just make this 56. We'll make this white. And I'm just gonna paste in the logo because I've already done my research. So basically you can just Google it and find the SVG of the Tesla logo. And we're gonna paste that in there. Now sizing, I've got 120 pixels width, 12 pixels high. Whilst we're doing this, let's actually click on our main frame here. So Tesla, let's go down to layout guide and we'll go to columns. Let's give this 12 here. Gutter, we're gonna make 16 and margin, let's make this 64. Why? I don't know, you don't have to, but that's what I'm going with. Now we can hide and show our grid using Shift and G. And you'll see me do that a lot, it just helps keep everything aligned. For navigation, we'll go to our text tool, we'll click in here and let's say vehicles, vehicles. For the font, I'm using this Universal Sans Display Trial. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it's a premium paid font that Tesla use. If you wanna get it yourself, I'll put it in the description and you can either buy it or get a trial. Now, if we have that selected, we'll press Shift and A to make that an auto layout. We'll make sure that padding is set to zero and zero. Gap, we're gonna set 232. If we click on vehicles, we can press Command and D, and we'll do that a few times. So energy, charging, discover, and shop. And then we'll just delete that. So there, we have our navigation, so let's center that. Now, if we go to the Tesla website, you'll see they've got these three icons up here. Now, we can actually grab these straight from the website. Don't tell anyone, but if you right-click on it, inspect element. Now, if it's an SVG here, you can right-click on that and go copy, copy element. Now, if we go back into Figma, control V, look at that. We got a bloody SVG of the icon straight from the web page. And if you just do that with all of them, then we'll make them black, just like our logo. And then we'll slide that into our header. Now let's pull up our grid. Let's see how everything's sitting. We want that to sit 64 pixels from the side. We also want it to sit centered. So 16 pixels top and bottom. Tesla, 64 pixels. This should be centered and centered like this. That is our header. Simple as that. Next up, we'll go here. We'll go to the Cybertruck page. Now this is the UK version of the website, so it might look different for you, but this is what we need here. So we're gonna right click on the Cybertruck logo and we're gonna grab that SVG from there, just like we did with the icon. So right click, copy, copy element, and let's see if this works. Oh yeah, now that's a bloody SVG. We can change the color of it and we're gonna put that somewhere down here. Now we wanna have some stats down here, so let's add them in quickly. So text, we're gonna add this here. I've got this set as, this is 32 pixels font size, and then I've got this here, which is 20. Here we will say range. And we're actually gonna make this 16 pixels. What we'll do is we'll click on that and that, and we'll make that an auto layout. 
in the gap, we're going to make two. We'll hold all and duplicate that out. Now we'll select all of these and we'll make these an auto layout. We'll click on our first one here. Now we're going to do width, hug contents, and we're going to give that a padding of 40. And then we're going to go over here to stroke, give it a white stroke, and we're going to change that so it's just on the right and we're going to change the opacity of that to 10. Once we've done that, we can click on that auto layout and then we can go copy properties and we want to paste that into our other ones here. So copy, paste, and then we'll go over to our main auto layout that's got those three in it and we'll change the gap to zero. The auto layout stuff can sometimes get a little bit fiddly, but hopefully you're following along okay. Now if we click on the main auto layout, we can go stroke We'll give this one pixel white and then we'll make that 10 and let's give that a corner radius of eight and then let's just increase the size of it a little bit and you know what let's maybe give it a fill let's go black but we'll make that really subtle so maybe just like 10 or something maybe something like that hmm, maybe a little less than that now i'm going to hold command and i'm just going to slide this out here now I'm just gonna slide this in here. Now this is just a button, so this is a blue button with this color here. You can do what you want with this. I don't wanna go into every individual step, but I've just taken that in there. So that's looking pretty good. What we might wanna do is do this, and then we'll make sure that's in the center. Let's go with this. And then the next thing we've got to do is make a massive text layer. Now this is just going to say adventure and size. I've gone with 116 letter spacing zero. Put that in the center, duplicate it out again. And then let's say designed for we'll make that 32 pixels and we'll drag that down to something like that. It's kind of an unusual H1, but I think that kind of works. Now we'll click on that and then let's go to blending mode and then let's change this to luminosity. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna let some of the light behind it come in because we kind of want the text to feel like it's in the image itself. So the sunlight kind of reflecting off of it in a way. Okay, so we're almost, almost done. It looks good, the image looks good. It would work on a website, but what we want to do is we want to animate this image so we can do that using mid journey. We'll go back over to mid journey and we'll click on our upscaled image. Now down here, we can go animate image and we're going to click on manual low motion. Now we're going to keep this pretty much just as it is, but at the end here, I want to add in no camera movement, no camera panning, because ideally we want this image to look like the car is just coming down the road and we want it to kind of be able to loop. We don't want it to be glitching out and moving around too much. We want the composition to stay relatively the same. And this is what we get. This pretty much works across all of these. We really could choose any of these. It's done a really good job. I think we'll go with this one here. Now what we can just do is we can go extend auto. It's going to give us another four seconds to work with. Now we have a nine second video that doesn't look perfectly, but it stays the same enough that it's not too jarring when it does start over. Now I'm sure you can see the video itself is quite low res. I think it's only 480p. Now, if you wanted to use this on an actual production ready website, I would say you would have to upscale it using something like Astra to either 1080 to get it looking extra crisp. But for the purpose of just making something fun and being able to share it online, the quality kind of works. And I'll show you how I do that. So in Figma, I'll just go here and I'll hide my background image. I'm also going to hide my text here and then we'll make sure that the fill on the background is hidden too. Now we can just click on this and we can export this as a PNG. We can pull it into a video editing program like DaVinci where we have our PNG of our website. I also have our text which I pulled in here and I changed the layer mode of that to luminosity. You can just drag in the video behind it and just like that you have something cool you can show your friends online. And that's it. So hopefully you guys were able to follow along. If you did, please give the video a like. Subscribe if you like this sort of stuff. And I'll catch you guys soon with another video.